Selec, a good pathologist. You mentioned breast cancer and prostate cancer, and, and it's interesting because uh, tell us about the statistics and, and the disease, these two diseases, right, and how right. similar or different they are. Right. Uh, well, I have to uh, honor you uh, at the uh, gala the other night. You, you asked the crowd, uh, what was the color of breast cancer awareness? And immediately everybody knew pink. Uh, when you asked about prostate cancer, not, not so many. That's right. Uh, and the same thing about when is breast cancer awareness month versus uh, prostate cancer awareness month. Uh, I would venture to say that most listeners out there don't know how similar prostate cancer is to breast cancer. Uh, pr uh, breast cancer accounts for about 230,000 new diagnoses each year and prostate cancer right on the same number exactly. Uh, it's estimated that one in eight women will develop breast cancer and surprisingly one in seven men will develop prostate cancer, so actually a little bit higher. Both are the number one cancers in each of the sexes. Both account for about 14% of new cancer diagnoses. And so it's fascinating because yeah. I bet you a lot of people don't know how close these two diseases are, how parallel they are. The number of deaths are almost the same, 27,000 versus 30,000. And you know, the only difference is that women are diagnosed around like 61 and men are around like 66, that five year difference that we know. But that's amazing what yeah. you're saying about the number of these, these kind of... Right. Uh, right. And even under the microscope, we find a lot of similarities, uh, as in breast cancer, where there's a spectrum of changes from benign to malignant, and we have many of these uh, uncertain gray zone diagnoses in the middle, so too with prostate cancer, which is another reason why, as a patient, you need to get a hold of your pathology report and understand those diagnoses. And we're seeing now even the same genetic components that are similar. We're seeing BRCA1 and BRCA2, in men with prostate cancer. Absolutely. And I just wrote an article about, you know, possibility that one day, if you really have good genetic component, when you know a man is headed toward a very aggressive prostate cancer, just like the same kind of genetic component that Angelina Jolene has, do we do one day a preemptive radical prostatectomy to save someone's life? We're not quite there yet, but maybe in the future we will get there. You called me a few months ago and you said, I like what you're saying about the treatment options and surgery should be the first line of treatment for a lot of these prostate cancers because of the difference between before surgery and after surgery, the, the fact that these pathologies, random biopsies are not accurate. What is the, the take on that? And right, right. Well, if you could imagine the prostate uh, walnut sized organ, maybe slightly larger and just randomly sticking some needles in there you may miss a tiny focus of cancer, which is contributing to your elevated PSA and the whole reason you, you went into the biopsy. Uh, and we see oftentimes when prostate glands are removed, oftentimes the Gleason score of the final pathology is higher than that of that which was predicted on the biopsy. So Meaning that the biopsies are not accurate and the final report after surgery shows a lot more cancer and more aggressive type of cancer. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Uh, in a high percentage of cases, the biopsies can underestimate the true pathology. Well said. 